Good evening, everyone. Very warm welcome to today's ISU USI Smart Learning Class for Horizons. And uh, I'm delighted uh, we have present USI Dr. Sanjay Kulkarni, Honorary Secretary Dr. Lakshman Prabhu, and uh, past uh, Secretary USI Dr. Keshav Murthy, who have also logged in. Uh, I'll just open this class for the regents by inviting first Dr. Sanjay Kulkarni and then Dr. Lakshman Prabhu to say a few words, and then I'll request Dr. Sujata to take over, first by introducing our faculty, and then carry on the proceedings. May I invite Dr. Sanjay Kulkarni to say a few words? Yeah, th thank you, Dr. Chawla. Mm, I, I, today I'm in Chicago on way to India, mm, so I joined specifically because I respect Dr. Amilal Bhatt mm, tremendously. And I have attended lots of his workshops. And, and one of the workshops when uh, Warren Snodgrass was there, uh, Dr. Snodgrass, who is considered a world authority in hyperspadius, also um, recognized the contribution of Dr. Amilal Bhatt. So Amilal has published a book. And we are very happy that he's from India and his techniques are followed around the world. So I, I have tremendous respect for Amilal. And uh, you, hypospedias is a subject which we cannot understand by reading a book. You understand? You have to go and spend some time. And he has spent a lifetime on working on one disease, one organ. So I'm very happy to join together for this workshop. The only problem is that sometime later I have to give, go for the airport. So I may leave in between. Welcome, Amilal. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Lakshman. Uh, just yeah yeah th thank you very much uh, president sir amilal sir uh, chair of indian school of urology co chair i will only say one thing and i am reminded of john peter blandy's very famous statement every man child reserves the natural right r i g h t to write w r i t e his name in snow so that means a ma man child has to be a pointer and when a man child is born with hypospadias, this is not possible. And we are here to learn precisely how to achieve this from Dr. Amilal Bhatt. Thank you very much for this, uh, for this opportunity. And I hope we will have a great time learning from Dr. Bhatt. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Shyata, if you can take over, uh, introduce the faculty yes, and carry Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Amilal Bhatt. As all of you have heard, so many people uh, hold him in great awe and respect. He's the he's the eminent hypospadiologist of India, apart from being a pediatric urologist, and he is uh, uh, a world-renowned authority in hypospadias. And we are very uh, fortunate to have him to teach us the basics, starting from anatomy and going on to the various aspects of hypospadia surgery. He is one of the uh, very famous authority uh, in uh, hypospadias. He has six operative techniques which he has developed on his own and three of them have been cited in Campbell's urology textbook. He has authorized a book which is devoted to hypospadias known as Hypospadias Principles and Practice of Hypospadiology. And sir, uh, it is my request to you to bring out an Indian version, which uh, can be brought by all our students, and uh, it can be made a household uh, book. And uh, with this uh, few words, uh, which do not actually describe your entire personality. And oh, I have to add that he is now the president of the pediatric section of uh, USI. And uh, we wish you all the best, sir, for your uh, upcoming uh, uh, post in pediatric urology. And with this few words, I invite you to please start uh, your uh, session on, uh, on today's uh, webinar, which is the ISU USI Resident Smart Learning Program on hypospadias. So sir, the first uh, section is relevant anatomy. I leave it to you to carry out the way you would like it, sir. So please start your uh, talk, sir. Hello, ha, sir, please start. Thank you. Can you hear me? 
हेलो who has given me the opportunity to put their technique and in results we had been gathering together these are the four and this uh, braka fellow who was the person who indicted this uh, terminology hypospadias mafia and uh, at most about 20 years we had been meeting in all international national meetings and i have started some doing the job and few of the basic things which i would like to share today long back i almost four decades back john duckett coined the terminology of hypospadiology in depth study of art and science of correction of hypospadias so have we understood hypospadiology he himself at that time said that many successful pedat no works ideally for all hypospadias choose a suitable technique for individual case and i will add one choose suitable case technique in individual case which you can do the best so as i have been assigned the job relevant clinical anatomy can a important points in note on a examination of the child so i'll start combining these two so let us first to the basic. sir can i interrupt you sir just one minute your try is being sir can i interrupt you can so, i interrupt you hello your tell for yes then uh, yeah Sir, yes, one sir. question. What you yes, can sir. do is, sir, uh, you are not. Yes, I, I am okay. hearing you, sir. Yeah, sir, internet issue is there from your end probably. Your voice is breaking. If you can put your uh, picture, uh, you can stop your video and then continue probably. Then your voice will be a little better, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, your 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 own okay. video. Uh, your, I'll time. stop my video. Video. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. Yes. So uh, let us start with the uh, embryo midline and form the urethra and the ectodermal fold fuse in the midline and form the skin of the penis and mesoth mesoderm proliferation in these two layer forms the layers of the penis and the sponjosum this is the basic and if we come with this basic then you see this happens these are the two corporal bodies corporal bodies are surrounded by two layers of the tunica albuginea it is a important one see two layers of this then it is surrounded by the bux fascia bux fascia is again in two layers deep layer goes into the midline and fuses with the septum and the superficial layer again comes similarly dartos also has two layers and blood vessels and blood supply of the skin and penis is through these two layers so this is important another important point here is that if we see so this is the urethral plate underneath is the spongiosum and this is the urethral plate so when you do hypospadia surgery what you find the attachment of the skin dartos fascia and the superficial layer of the pux fascia and deep layer of the pux fascia goes underneath the spongiosum this is basic anatomy when you are doing the hypospadia surgery you will have to remember it now what you have to see from the start from the penis size of the penis glans dorsal hood cordy meatal stenosis likewise all these and let us take these one by one how can we go and examine it penis size why it is important it is important to plan the surgery to have a better result 
And if the size of the penis is very small, like this one, if you see, then you will have to prepare the patient by hormone therapy and if something like this one, a very small penis, then these patients needs evaluation for DST. This is the key window. If we see the age and the length of the penis, then this is the five years. This window is important. Here, the penile length is about three to four centimeters. So it is important that any child who has the length five or two centimeters, then glance grew, size of the urethra plate in the glance and grew beatus ratio. Very important. You see from this small glance. In bring the glance plastic to bring the meters at the tip. Sir, your voice is then, breaking. Sir. Uh, can you improve the internet, sir? So, uh, but sir, आपका आवाज नहीं आ रहा है बराबर से. Hello. Hello. I think uh, it's uh, related to bandwidth and uh, that problem will be more when he's running the video. Uh, uh, I think he's lost the connection. Let him join again. I'll have message him. Hello. Yes, yeah, so we can hear you. Sir. Now you can hear, sir? Yes, sir. Better, sir. Yes. So, glass size is important. And this one, these two ratios are very important. A is this one, is this, this is the meters. And B and C, this is the glenular flap. So, when you are marking, you mark these on the glass so that you can prepare a good glenular flap and you can have a natural meatus. Anatomy of the meatus may be careful. Many a time you find that there is a double urethra and length of the double urethra may be a one centimeter, two centimeter. But along with that, whenever there is a double urethra, you will find the ventral urethra, which is natural one, which is joined to the bladder, is distal part is hypoplastic. So you have to take care of this hypoplastic urethra and double urethra while managing these patients. Urethral plate, this is the key and success where you will have to decide the type of the repair. Width of the urethral, along with width, the, you will find the skin by the side of the urethra and skin interposition also. These are important points. Be careful. Listen. Width of the urethra, the skin by the side of the urethra and interposing skin. Many you will find, you will find from the meatus to urethral plate, there is interposing skin. So these make the difference in the 
decision of the hypospadia is repair what are these favorable urethral point the urethral uh, the here in this case urethral plate is well developed and so many a time like this one you can do even without incising the urethral plate tubularization is feasible another is the where there is intervening skin tissue so when there is a intervening skin tissue between the beatus and the urethral groove or distal plate these are the patients who needs the dorsal inlay graft otherwise there will be a big gap and there will be fibrosis and your the repair is likely to be failed these are in when the type of the cases you will decide it's not possible to but on table you may have this type of intermediate urethral plates so if these two if the urethral plate is narrow incise unincised and incised urethral plate is less than 0.5 then these patients needs graft this is how you hell have to put the dorsal in leg graft in these cases most will find that there is hardly any urethral plate so these are the patients who needs and who are the cases of replacement urethroplasty then is the cordy minimal cordy like this one you do a partial penile degloving severe cordy accordingly we'll see and i'll take up this as a separate one because talk is on the cordy correction tips and Trades. Then type of hypospadias. You will everybody knows well that anterior, middle, and posterior. According to the site, it is being decided. And clinically, you will say that this is anterior one. These are middle one, and these are posterior one. These are easy. You can tubularize the urethral plate here. Maybe that you need to augment the urethral plate, or maybe you replace the urethral plate. And these most of the cases. you will have to replace the urethral plate then spon joseph it is a very important step i'll tell you why many a time i have been asked this question and many people talk about that we don't find spon joseph you see it is not possible that there is no spon joseph because if we go embryologically glans is the extension of the spon joseph so how is it possible that it is not there that may be hypoplastic well developed or under developed but there will be and you are able to see you just have to see you see in all these cases the arrow shows so that you can see even before surgery that these spongular pillar are very nicely marked here you can see in all cases then just after penile degloving see this healthy spongiosum is available even in reoperative any cases you will be able to find this spongiosum see for this spongiosum and utilize this spongiosum why it needed to the as i said that this cases so accordingly we developed and well developed recently also had this paper and he the contradiction which he put that was with the light fibrosis and severe fibrosis let me make a dogmatic statement that there is no fibrosis that is hypoplastic urethra so this is the poorly developed spongiosus you can see the thin one with less blood supply and tu after tubularization it is the diameter of the urethra is less than the proximal healthy urethra another one is averagely developed thick 
with good blood supply diameter is all than that one and the well developed robust thick spongiosum like this and you see this pores have picked up and the when you tubularize and do a spongioplasty then diameter of this urethra is more than the proximal healthy urethra another important point hypoplastic urethra length may vary in cases from a centimeter to the four centimeter and the important point is that when you are utilizing it if you want to utilize this one along with the urethroplasty you can save it and the key of mobilizing the hypoplastic urethra is inject a saline just below the skin and then mobilize and preserve the urethral plate if you want to utilize the urethral plate take care that there is no damage to the hypoplastic urethra another important point is this is usually being missed and we don't take care about this torsion the torsion may be moderate to severe that should be treated along with the hypospedias repair in this case you can see that left torsion of around 90 degree this is right torsion of about 45 degrees then prefuse this is again very important and one has to know all anatomy of the prefuse because prefuse is the skin bank which is utilized for the urethral replacement so let us see what we can see this one you see the size of the prepuce many case it's a very small one then it is a small then it is a adequate one here with the normal length where these are the patient with the cordy without hypospedias prepuce is well formed another important point is that if you want to have the prepucioplasty then you have to measure the prepucial width and very simple method is that you approximate by the thumb or finger or with the forceps or you can measure with the caliper or otherwise my technique of three stay sutures that will if that is adequate on pulling that suture two keeping that one here and this is the free then this this skin is adequate for prepucioplasty type of the prepuce there may be hood this is a very important point the because these will decide what is the type of the blood supply of the prepuce how much of the prepuce you can utilize that may be the uh, one hump there may be two humps with cobra eye or sometimes you will find triple hump and you see the this site is is a very important you will find in distal hypospedias is just near the on the dorsal foot itself and when it goes in proximal here it like go like this one so here you will find this is in the mid shaft so embryology this is this marks the site of the embryological abnormality which has occurred in the particular patient so this gives a clue about this one that these type of the patients will be having a severe hypospedias blood supply blood supply is important there may be a single vessel may be a double vessel h type and n type important because here you will have to raise a vascular pedicle either required for covering the new urethra or for preparing a flap if there is a single blood supply if you damage then then your repair is likely to fail so take care which type of the blood supply prepuce you are dealing with and accordingly dissect your flaps then perineal this length perineal scrotal length this is very important you see the perineum first of all i have brought out these few points you see if you see any dimple like this one or 
bifurcation of the median refrain these patients will have underneath vagina developing so see these patients for dst if the perineo scrotal length is longer one then these patients are to be evaluated for the dst you can see this bifurcation and the vagina is inside here then scrotum and scrotalization you see scrotalization is that when the scrotum is going up on the shaft we usually don't see about these ported in the cause for the cordy along with if we don't treat them that there is a recurrence of cordy and still they, there will be here on this penile shaft when the child grows elder one so in these patients scrotoplasty is necessary on the other hand there may be other patients where there is a the pinoscrotal transposition in such cases you will have to deal and that may be along with the second stage or sometimes some people do in third stage so better to do either with the first stage or in one stage if you are doing in all or in the second stage then evaluation endocrine evaluation that is important when to do that one if the hypospadia one or both of the tests is all palpable or non palpable and then small penis if these are the patients then they needs to be evaluated for sex disorders dst cases then radiological evaluation because if they severe hypospadia then they are likely to hit upper tract and there may be the accessory female genital organs so they may need usg for the upper tract usg or iv or ct mcu and genitogram genitogram will tell about that that even this is vagina uterus and the fallopian tube and going the dye into the ileates and if you leave behind this one then there is likely recurrent uti a postvoid dribble and the stone formation in these cases and also is needed in this case to opening this is urethral then second point is about the cardi tips and tricks about the cardi the misconception cardi is not synonym to the fibrous tissue this with histology that plastic the urethra and spongiosum another important point let us see most commonly methods used are what are those penile decline with without or dorsal trication plication or transaction of the urethral plate do we correct the etiological factor by this one let us reconsider it why this resection of the spongiosum leads to bleeding and the plication procedures plication procedures are against the anatomical principles of surgery because if you go embryologically dorsal surface is normal and the ventral surface is a pathological one so rather than embarking on the pathological side of the shaft we are dealing with the normal one which is normal and we are making that a pathological one so that is important that as far as possible avoid dorsal plication and that shortens the penis there are chances of injury and importance if there is a injury to the nerve 
another important point if you follow them to the adulthood what is the commonest complaints of the hypospadiac in adulthood is a short penis do we think about it do we take care during our surgical repair we have to think about this one so let us see what the cardi is so if we go by this one so this is the two corporal bodies and this is the entrapment of the coverings of the penis that leads to the curvature this is the basic fundamental and the etiological factors may be in the skin dartos fascia bux fascia or the short corpus spongiosum dorso ventral corporal disproportion or congenital short urethra this factor may be either as a single or a combination of multiple factors so what classification may give dorsal lateral one or recurrent one mild is 30 degree moderate is 30 45 and more than 45 is severe one that you can see over here all type of the cardi how to evaluate still the best method and which is being commonly followed is get t test inject this line and raise make the penis erect and see the curvature the disadvantage with this is that many a time we over infuse and that may lead to that may not be as the natural one so people may use vasoactive drugs like alprost and pg one during surgery but this advantage with this one is that that erections last long that may be a reason for bleeding during the surgery then elastography we have recently invented this one and we have seen the stiffness of the tissue can be measured with the elastosonography and this will tell and in future maybe that we will be able to exactly locate the site and extent of the cardi tissue and we will be able to correct the cardi in a better way so these are the step so seeing these etiological factors let us go step by step so that we can correct the cardi as well as the etiological factor so then it the repair becomes as per anatomical and surgical principles of surgery of the urethral plate and spongiosum mobilization of urethral plate with spongiosum into the glands extended proximal urethral mobilization resection of the tethering tissue midline dissection of the corporal body spongioplasty glenoplasty then is the last one is single stitch dorsal plication or corporotomy or superficial uh, corporoplasty penile disassembly though it is mentioned but it is rarely required so let us see all these steps are these effective if are these effective then we will see that that means we are able to correct the physiological factor see this one there is mild cardi and having simple penile had corrected the curvature see this mild declamation has corrected the curvature so that means here, here the archaeological factor contributory was skin and dartos another one here you see severe curvature normally we think that this will need the transaction of urethral plate but if we mobilize it then we are able to correct this curvature and similarly here also severe curvature with the mobilization of the urethral plate and spongiosum corrects the cardi that means this here the cause was skin dartos as well as the spongiosal segment here again the after mobilization of urethral plate still there is a cardi but when you mobilize this one into the glands the cardi is being corrected then again this is the cause lies in the spongiosal segment many a time even after mobilizing this you can retract the urethral plate one side and dissect in the midline you can see if you dissect in midline and then the cardi is being corrected 
proximal urethral mobilization. Even in severe hypospadia, this is possible and cardi is being corrected. And if we can preserve the urethral plate in any of these one, I'll let you know when we discuss about the urethroplasty, this is the best option if we have. The same we have this landmark article, which I published long back in 2007, has more than 100 citations. Now, spongioplasty. You see, this spongiosal pillars are on Y shape. When we mammalize and do a spongioplasty, that becomes I. When our, our Y becomes I, it lengthens the spongiosal segments and helps in correction of the cordy. Similarly, glenular flap also. When we mobilize the glenular flap and when we do the glass plasty like this one that pushes the urethra up and corrects the glenular curvature. You see, glenular curvature is, correction is only possible when you do a good glance plasty. Then is a dorsal plication. You do when you have seen all these factors in step by step. Why is that? Then, then you say, you may say that if you are doing dorsal plication, then why to do all these one measures? That is important in this sense. Number one is that even preserve the spongiosum and spongiosal segment, you can do a urethroplasty. Length of the dorsal percussion required will be reduced to much less. And that will help in prevention of shortness of the penis. You can see here you can do this one the corporopony and corporoplasty hypopenomaly these type of cases you will think that you will have to transect the urethral plate but if you go step by step you are able to correct the cord nicely these are the cases of severe cases where you will have to go for urethroplasty and again of these three. So if we go by this one as said that there are disadvantages of the same one which I described earlier. If we go by step by step, penile degloving, penile degloving along with mobilization of urethral plate and spongiosum, resection of the tethering tissue, midline dissection and lateral dissection, proximal urethral mobilization and ventral lengthening procedure as required, I'll show you. So let us see whether these are effective. Here we have gone step by step. The cause tethering of the spongiosal segment. Here has corrected the cardi. Here you see the penile decleaving as long with the Mobilization of the urethral plate and spongiosum. It's a very simple one. What you do is transect the urethral plate at the corona level, go at the level of the tunica albuginea, dissect this one urethral plate and spongiosum and deglove, and you are able to correct the cord. Another after doing all these measures, if there is a tethering tissue, reset that tethering tissue, raise good glenular flaps, the cordy is being corrected. Then lateral mobilization. You see there is a cordy after mobilization of urethral plate and spongiosum. You do the midline dissection as well as the lateral dissection of backspacia. As I told you earlier that the cordy is because of the entrapment of the facial coverings. If we release the facial coverings from the ventral side, then cordy will be corrected. 
So here you are able to correct the cordy and you decide your urthoplasty uh, secondly. Here, if there is a severe one, you can go with this dorsal plication or many a times you rarely require, if need be still, they, you either you do dorsal plication or ventral lengthening procedures. Ventral lengthening procedures are corporotomy, superficial, as we see the, the the superficial layer of tunica albuginia don't end into the spongiosal uh, corporal tissue. So here you can see this is here blue shining you are seeing. So this is superficial corporotomy. Many cases if it is not possible with this one then do it corporotomy and put the graft that graft may be tunica vaginalis skin or Bovine pericardium now recently has been used and intestinal mucosa. So let us see and summarize. If we go step by step, what the advantage is that penile degliding corrects the etiological factor of skin and dartos, mobilization of spongiosum, spongiosum segment, midline dissection and lateral dissection, bux fascia. Spongioplasty and glenuloplasty, spongiosum segment, superficial corporotomy, corporoplasty, or dorsal plication corrects the corpro dorsoventral corporal disproportion. So, here, if we go step by step, we correct the curvature according to the etiological factors. So we, we studied, uh, conducted a study on 115 cases and we needed the transaction of the urethral plate only in 20% of the cases. And on reviewing the literature, we found that transaction of urethral plate was in about 50% of the cases. So if we go step by step, then you can reduce the transaction of the urethral plate. In many of cases of secondary cases where you find mobilization of the, the spongiosum and the skin urethral plate, the cordy can be corrected. Then principles of repair in distal hypospedias. What are those principles? So what is our objective? Our objective is to have a straight penis with the pointing meatus aesthetic penis and functional urethra. You see, I am why I'm stressing functional urethra, conical glands, cosmetic appearance, and whether we are able to is maintain the exact or not. So these are our, our objective. So how can we achieve? of the congenital anomaly is that correct the or restore the anomaly with the to normal or near normal with the existing tissue or, or supplementation of the tissue. So restore the anatomy to a normal or near normal. That is our objective. Another important point here is ideal replacement of urethra is urethra only. Upadhyaya, uh, they said long back that in modern approach, as far as possible, urethral plate should be preserved and utilized. What are those key points which are very important is the approximation of the urethral plate and margin without buckling or eversion. Maintain a good blood supply of the urethral plate or the flap if you are using. Proper plane of mostesis, microsurgical instruments, and magnification. If you use this one, minimum trauma to the tissue, and you maintain the blood supply. So, how we achieve all these? How can we? So, to have this one, we have done few 
modifications hypospadia distal hypospadia which i am going to do is now phenyl d11 normally we do full plain d11 leaving we are dissecting should if we get all this one the complete the ventral penile tegum go for dorsally we have to remove the ventral side only and you see that you are able to see you can see on your end point is or the preputioplasty another mobilization of the spongiosum and the utilization of it one the mobilization has to be from proximal to the distal one lateral to the medial one and plane of dissection at this level is at the level of tunica albuginea that means you are taking the deep layer of the pux fascia along with the spongiosum if you take that one there will not be any damage to the spongiosum and blood supply of the urethral plate and spongiosum will not be compromised another important point the this dissection in the same ones and when you use this spongiosum for spongioplasty you produces the chances of coronal fistula which is the commonest site of the fistula and another important point is that the neo urethra is with the spongiosum up to the neo meatus incising the urethral plate here incision is important if it is a superficial incision not going deep one then it is okay but if you go for the deep incision then there are chances of fibrosis right there you see what to till there will be a bladder spasm that go the excavation in leads to the fib so if you have gone much deep in the spongiosum then replace it with the dorsal graft or specially all these patients where there is intervening skin also has to be supplemented with the graft dorsal ile graft graft may be used either by the skin which i usually use inner superficial skin buccal or free skin graft anything tubularization of urethral plate key point in the tubularization urethral plate is start your tubularization the centimeter proximal to the meatus if you do this one till plate now the usual nasa the three mass a, a b c this is the site for starting the tubularization of the urethral plate and this is the site for starting the spongioplasty why it is important important in this sense when you start tubularization process a picture and inside of the meat you will there will be a two is very important the commonly used dorsal dartos lateral dartos the epithelial skin flap double breasted deep epithelial skin flaps and tunica vaginalis and corpus spongiosum let me make this statement that what this one is there are disadvantage of the conventional means if we commonly use a dorsal dartos that may lead to the torsion skin necrosis and a buried skin dermoid or tunica is albuginia needs the scrotal dissection there may be chances of hematoma and the infection what we did what we discussed was basic concept is to reconstruct normal or a near normal urethra means near normal organ 
adding spongioplasty the tuberalization of urethral plate reconstructs a near normal urethra and that is what our objective is so urethral spongioplasty should be a necessary component of the tubularized urethral plate advantages are healthy vascular tissue locally available good blood supply of the urethral plate is maintain reconstruct say near normal urethra why to eye spongioplasty adds in the length of the spongiosal segments and helps in correction of the curvature and still if you need anything one either ventral dartos dartos or tunica albuginea still you can use that one that option is open so utilize the spongiosum first to as i told you start proximally here so if you say the spongioplasty done what is disadvantage of the conventional spongioplasty which we are doing the disadvantage is that when we do spongioplasty the suture line of the urethral plate spongiosum and skin are superimposing if all three suture slants are superimposing then there are chances of fissure the urethra becomes the conical normally not going to breasting spongioplasty how to do that one mobilize the urethral plate incise tubularized urethral plate one pillar of the mobilized segment of the spongiosum is sutured just lateral to it half sutured then it is complete sutured then another is another pillar is being taken and the that is being covered with the second of this point that's how you can see nicely after this one this flap is being put now this is that flap which you can bring that one the advantage is that you have a double healthy layer of this spongiosum over the neo urethra urethra is cylindrical and covering is with double healthy so there are less chances of fissure still if you need or many cases where you use you can use the double dartos and think that the this is the tubularized urethral plate is a longer one poorly developed in those cases you can utilize the tunic what is another point as we discussed that we are going to recreate a near normal organ so frenulum is the part of the pnas so reconstruct a frenulum and do a frenuloplasty nice frenuloplasty followed by the meatoplasty glans plasty glans plasty you can see a normal conical glans meatus at the tip with a white meatus and then is ventral dartosorephy what that dartos you see people say bring the dorsal dartos why dorsal dartos dartos is a continuation of the ventral dartos also the same dartos if you have a thick dartos like this one how will you get this one when you are going for partial or complete penile degloving your plane of dissection has to be at the level of buck fascia take both layers of the dartos fascia along with this one so you have a thick layer of the dartos so even the ventral darts torso refi will cover the neo urethra with a good dartos even with ventral one then do a prepucioplasty in three layers you have done the prepucioplasty this is prepuce this is prepuce and you see what you get many times you are not able to even recognize that 
operated or not and this is you get the take of my step approach for correction initial plate and spongiosum enlarges the scope of tipu erythroplasty tipu is the first choice in distal hypospadias tipu with spongioplasty reconstructs a near normal urethra and augmentation of urethroplasty enlarges the scope of the tipu tipu with frenuloplasty and Repuscioplasty reconstructs a normal penis. That is what our aim and object doesn't compromise the blood supply of the skin. Dorsal dato single or double may be used as an intermediate tissue. you you use tunica vaginal flag very much for your patience i have book hypospadiology principles and practice thank you now i'll go for this one uh, 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 videos uh, for should i start uh, the videos now yes sir but only uh, me, uh, a bit of the uh, your voice is cracking up because of the i think internet issues yeah but we'll go ahead sir Okay. Uh, but can you hear me? Is the voice okay? Uh, better than before, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, with the video, we are not getting any voice, sir. Voiceover is not there. Yeah. What? Voiceover is not heard, sir. Sir, come in. Uh, sir, voiceover is not uh, there. You will find that in most of the class, the sir, one request. Yes, sir. Can you play the video all over again, sir? Because uh, that time your voice was not heard. Uh, you are not the video voice. Uh, are you getting the voice, or should I speak? No, uh, sir. When you played the video, we were not getting the uh, back of. Uh, the voice in the backup. So, are you having a already voice over the edit or you are speaking, sir? Yes, I already recorded voice. Uh, but that was not heard. Is marked as it is shown in these arrows. That's fine. That's fine. The skin incision is being marked and 
the glenular flap marks are also put in. Then stage switches are applied on the prepicial skin where we are planning to have the future prepicial. at the incision site, the incision is started ventrally proximal to the meatus, mm. then extended on U-shape towards corona on both sides. Then a plane of dissection is created at the level of pux fascia. You see, the deeper shining is pux fascia. And then the incision is extended into the side. Incision is carried up to the corona at the level of box fascia. And then same incision is extended to the prepucial hood. Partial penile declaving is being done at the level of box fascia. Now, the is dissected from the corporal body and the corpora. Once you get the proper plane, then it is dissected distally. Distally, spongiosum is averting laterally is dissected up to corona while dissecting the spongiosum care is being taken not to injure the spongiosum and the corpora a shine glistening is his corporal body maintaining this plane of dissection go laterally and dissect the spongiosum to corona. Spongios al along with the pux fascia is dissected. Now, similarly on the other side, incision is being made in the pux fascia and then spongiosum is dissected from the corporal body. Lately going spongiosum is dissected and this dissection is carried up to corona. Now you see the spongiosum has been dissected. Now in the same plane of dissection, spongiosum is dissected into the glands and that straightens the urethral plate. You can see clearly the spongiosum going into the glands. Similarly from the other side, spongiosum is dissected into the glands, excessive skin resides the plate is being excised. The midline incision in the urethral plate is given. Incision starts deep inside the meatus and then extended distally up to mid glands and depth has to be adequate through the spongiosum to widen the urethral plate enough. Now, the first suture is being taken for tubularization at the future meatus. A wide meatus is being created by this suture. Urethral plate is tubularized over eight French stent. The tubularization of urethral plate is being done with 7 O PDS suture. Just are being taken subcuticular and the edges of the urethral plate are inverted. Taken not to take this, this late absorber sutures through the urethral plate. Otherwise, these may end into microfistulae. Tubularization is extended distally up to the stay suture taken at the first step of tubularization. 
having a wide meters after tubalization of the urethral plates spongioplasty is being done spongioplasty is started proximal to the meatus and then extended distally this healthy spongiosum covers the tubalized urethral plate this is a healthy tissue cover for waterproofing that helps in prevention of fistulae after spongioplasty you can see clear the the diameter of the neo urethra is almost same as that of proximal healthy urethra so in this way we have constructed a near normal urethra glenoloplasty sutures are being taken the first layer is the subcuticular sutures usually 3 to 4 sutures are enough these sutures will create a conical glans with slit like opening at the tip this healthy tissue cover of glenular flaps will prevent fistula at the completion of inner layer of glenuloplasty outer suture layer is started after excising the excessive skin completion of outer glenular sutures for glenuloplasty the same closure is continued on the inner superficial skin to create a frenulum then prepucioplasty is started in three layers first inner superficial skin closure is being done up to future prepucial opening then dartos is sutured as a second layer this closure of dartos will have an additional support over the neo urethra after spongioplasty that helps again in the waterproofing and prevention of fistula the dartos closure over the neo urethra is continued on the shaft so if you can approximate the ventral dartos nicely over the neo urethra there is no need of bringing the dorsal dartos for waterproofing now dartos is close at the prepucial level with the completion of dartos layer now skin sutures are applied completing the prepucioplasty in three layers here sutures are taken through and through subcuticular sutures may also be applied according to the choice of surgeon on completion of skin closure you can see the adequate size of the prepucial opening you can retract the prepuce nicely with a conical glans and slit like meters i'll take up this uh, another video yes sir uh. are you able to see sir uh, we are able to see uh, only voice is uh, not very clear but uh, the video was quite uh, well seen sir
now you can see this video so this one hello yeah video is seen but voice is not seen voice, voice, voice is not I'll there, you, voice. yeah, yeah I'll, I'll speak that one so this sir, can is you a, start a, uh, from the beginning sir yes yes i'll start from the beginning yeah. This is a one and a half year child with mild cardi and mid penile hypospadias with meatal stenosis is being taken for the repair. Meatal dilatation is done and after dilatation infant feeding tube is being passed. One in one leg solution of adeline is being injected and inverted U-shaped incision then that going dorsally circumcoronal and penile degloving is being done. After penile degloving, you see there is some glenular cardi, which we can see Gitti's test shows there is a glenular cardi and distal one. So we started doing the mobilization of the urethral plate proximal to the meatus, creating a plane of dissection at the level of tunica albuginea, taking the deep layer of box fascia along with the spongiosum. You see the spongiosal pillars are going lateral towards the glands. Here we are mobilizing and these are the corporal body and that is the urethral groove. Similarly, it is mobilized on the other side. You see the deep layer of box fascia is going laterally and you dissect this deep layer of box fascia you will be able to lift up the spongiosum medially without damaging the spongiosum. Now the cordy, almost cordy has been corrected, only glenular cordy remaining. And this glenular cordy will correct while doing the glansplasty. The key step in mobilization of the spongiosum into the glans in the same plane of dissection, you mobilize the spongiosum up to the marked meatus on the glans, and that at the level of cunica albuginea, you raise the glenular wings and ventrally it has to go up to the tip of the corporal body. Urethral plate is being incised and this tubularization of urethral plate is being done by subcuticular incision, sutures, tubularization is completed. After tubularization, spongioplasty is being done. You see, complete spongioplasty is completed. Now, dorsal dartos is being raised here to cover this neourethra. Inner pupil skin with the dartos is being mobilized. Here care is being taken. You see the blood vessels shining on the dorsal skin. These should not be damaged. Otherwise, the dorsal skin supply will be compromised. And dissect 
medially only lateral also because if we go by attachment the lateral side dartos is thinner once you have raised this dartos dissect this one skin and then cover with the dorsal dartos flap After covering this with the dartos, you do a glance plasty and then skin closure is being done. This is the case where the TIP is visible with mild curvature and mid hypospidias. Another one I am going to share with you is this one. Here about a five-year male child. Are you seeing the video? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can yes, see. sir. Yes, sir. Penile degloving is being done. And then mobilization of the spongiosum from the corporal bodies is being done. This is the place where there is a maximal curvature. This is being dissected. Similarly, on the other side, it is being dissected. And proximal urethra is little bit mobilized. Complete penile degloving at the level of Bux fascia. If you go in proper plane of dissection, that hardly takes any time. And that is now, even after mobilization, there is a tethering because of the spongiosal segment. Spongiosal segment has been resected. Now, cordy is being correct, but still there is a curvature. Midline dissection is being done and the Gittes test again performed to see complete correction of the cordy. The inner propitial flap is being raised. Here it is important to go in between the two layers of the dartos. I'll repeat it between the two layers of dartos. If you go in that plane of dissection, then Blood supply of the both parts, the skin as well as the skin flap, which you are raising for the urethroplasty will be maintained and good blood supply is necessary. You can see the good supply of this one. Then the skin flap is major and for the length and then the width and this is being tubularized. You can see a long tube. This is anastomosed after resecting this skin over the mobilized spongiosum and hypoplastic urethra is laid open and after mobilizing and the resecting this one the anastomosis is done at the site of proximal where there was a bifurcation of the spongiosum this anastomosis is done if there is any everting tissue that is being resected and this is preserved spongiosum this is fixed to the corporal bodies. Glenular flaps are being raised. Again here, 
go up to deep up to the tunica albuginea and tip of the corporal bodies then do the distal anastomosis keeping the skin suture line dorsally then good glenuloplasty is being done and the skin tube is being fixed to the corporal bodies i'll make you explain if we see the difference of the two stage and one stage the graft is fixed and the tube which we have reconstructing is fixed to the corporal bodies so you make that similar one now the dartos is sutured dartos flap in between few sutures are taken to suture the margin of the spongiosum and distally up to the glans so that the skin is covered with the dartos so nowhere it is open one and then skin closure is done and this is at completion you can see the tip nicely made glans and straight penis thank you very much so i think i have shown all these three videos so the job assigned mass in distal and mid hypospadias so all these i do this commonly done if you want then i can show you the only flap but if the uh, residents want more questions on this one so that will be i'll be happy to take up the questions now uh yes thank you sir and uh, we definitely would request residents to ask the questions right now um, sir i'll start by asking uh, one yes, simple question which uh, many a times the residents uh, want to know is yes. uh, how do you measure stretched penile length uh, uh, in a patient with hypospadias you see ma'am as i showed you in the slide if you want that i can show you that slide tip at the root of the penis i'll show you like this one at the root of the penis stretch the penis with the prepuce and measure from the glans okay. stretch penis from glans to the root of the penis that is the stretch penile length Okay. Can you, did you get one? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. This is. I um, hope the residents are listening. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so one more uh, commonly uh, uh, asked question by the residents is: uh, Is there a method of uh, uh, measuring the degree of cordy without gaze test? Uh, clinically. Clinically, you see, with the experience, you may get an idea, but uh, exact when you even in my experience, what I have seen clinically, it looks like that you have corrected the cordy nicely, but when you do Gitti's test, you find that there is a residual cordy, and this is the commonest cause of the residual cordy after one stage repair. So one has to correct the cordy nicely. and see at the completion that you have corrected the cording nicely yes sir yes sir no i was talking of pre operative sir and pre operatively do you uh, means like it is difficult for a child but in adult hypospadias who are uh, um, uh, adults who go uh, hypospadias children who become adults without correction then uh, do you use the clinical photograph sir as a um, uh, after no, erection to yes yes let me tell you you see if i even in a child i ask the parents when they come and especially when i am planning with the next visit means <laughs> when the child comes and we are planning i ask the parents to take photograph <laughs> morning erections at that time that gives you a very good impression and ask them to take photograph lateral as well as ventral when you in an erect penis you will see how much is the tethering of the skin so that will give you not only of the extent of the cordy but some idea about the 
cardi causes skin dartos or even a deeper one okay sir so you do use clinical photographs even in children yes, that is a, sir very, there is a very, question very... in the chat chat box yes, yes sir ma yes ma'am there is a question in the chat box from uh, it is that uh, vinod kumar p uh, what is the yes, size of the neo urethra you would like to achieve is it always 8 french in the pediatric age group you see if you want to measure exact then the best way is you calibrate the proximal normal healthy urethra and see this individual because it is not by age even a healthy child of one and a half or two years may have a larger urethra in a three years or four year child so best way is to pass a caliber in the proximal urethra and you see the size of the urethra proximal healthy the urethra and that is the size for that child okay sir sir uh, one more question i would ask you sir is uh, you spoke briefly about hormonal treatment sir could yeah, you elaborate uh, what is your protocol my protocol is i usually use local one ma'am and especially uh, but in cases where especially of dst and the very small penis these are the patients who are the i think the uh, there is a loss of the dst receptors so these patients may need the injectable injectable in younger children i usually prefer scg 2000 to 4000 unit according to the age weekly up to 4 to 6 weeks and the local application 5% testosterone cream that is applied for 4 to 6 weeks and then is being taken for urethroplasty though people are using now dihydrotestosterone cream is available in western world but not available in india in india even testosterone cream is also not available so it is a better that if you don't have still you won't have to worry take pounds of nivea cream pouch of 20 gram mix up two pounds of serono gel in that one and then you prepare a testosterone cream Okay, sir. So, Serna's gel with any other moisturizer like yeah, pond yeah, or uh, yeah, lacrim or any other thing can any, be utilized. Any, any yeah. So cream. there is a it, there is yeah. So there is a repeat uh, question from uh, Doctor Ankit Goel that he wants to know the size of the catheter. I think you answered it that it will depend on the size of the proximal normal urethra. but yeah. if you would like to answer it again uh, yes sir let me tell and you and he also you, is asking the, what the, it, the, the, i'll explain it in a better way or more you see reconstruction of the size of urethra and a drainage catheter drainage catheter is sufficient of even 5 to 6 french even a 5 french in a child of 2 years to 8 years 10 years and maybe that you need a 6 french that is good enough to drain but for re what is the size of urethra which you want to reconstruct is the size of the proximal healthy urethra that if you have your clinical experience and expertise even with the 5 french you can create a larger urethra if you are not sure enough then you can put that stent of that size till you reconstruct a urethra and then drainage is good enough by 5 6 or 8 french uh sir and how long do you keep the catheter is his question yes ma'am in tubularization cases 7 to 10 days and in cases where skin flaps are being used about 12 to 14 16 days according to this edema of the penis in post operative period uh so there are two more questions i'll just read them yes, out it's uh, 
I think there are only comments, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, I have I have uh, faced these problems a few times. Is when we uh, you showed us a pre inner prepucial flap, which was based on the inner dartos. And uh, yes. while turning it to create a tube, sir, sometimes uh, the penis turns uh, on the same side. I hope you understood what I'm trying to say. That yes, there is yes. slightly twist in the penis uh, yes, no. towards the side of the flap. I I'll tell you, ma'am. You see, the cause of the loss of shine of flap urethral was the two three regions. Number one who was lying underneath the skin. So there were no good over the neo flap. Third one is that that is a flabby one. When we use that one, there is, we don't measure. A... Sir, your voice is breaking a bit. There is a larger size, please. To the... I'll speak slowly. Are you getting now? Yes, now it is better. Okay, then I'll repeat it. You see, there are the failure of the flap procedures were torsion, skin tube lying underneath the skin. Then third was that the glenular flaps were nose raised nicely to create a glance plasty and there was a meatal stenosis, larger size of the skin flap taken that led to diverticula since the skin tube was not supported by the datos that created and meatal stenosis. These were the causes of diverticula and these were the causes of failure of the one. Now you ask about the torsion, how to prevent that one. If you are taking from one side, as I took in this case, which I showed you the video, in that then you mobilize the flap up to the root of the penis. The Pedicle has to be free. There should not be any torque on the pedicle. And that is was free in, you might have seen my video. Yes, sir. Yeah. Up to this extent that I chose through with the dartos so that it is the dartos now. And that gives the symmetry of the aesthetic is that if there is a wide fracture, uh, wide pedicle and this vessel is not in the midline, then you in the pedicle and you can bring the dartos from both sides that will prevent the torque and you can cover and you have a good aesthetic penile shaft. Yes, sir. thank you. So, uh, sir, um, uh, uh, apart from students, I think many other uh, of our senior consultants are also there. There is a question from Gaurav uh, Kalkra, uh, like he wants to know um, a book which... Uh, will give him a good anatomy of the hypospadias. Uh, so I suggest you can buy sir's uh, <laughs> book on principles of hypospadias. <laughs> and uh, it is available by Spring, uh, Springler and it's available on Amazon. But sir, do you have any other? This, is, this is one uh, uh, publisher who came to the USI. I talked to him and he has agreed to the, uh, I think CBS, some publication is there. He has uh, assured me for 12,000 rupees, that is usually in uh, uh, Amazon is about 16 to 18,000. So there is yes, a concession sir. of 12, 4,000 rupees and that is available. 
third is the daily based cba applications you can order yeah thank you sir thank you for that that uh, that And would be helpful the, yeah yeah you ask about to make it available uh, let yes. me tell you you see the you everybody understands this one once you submit the material to any of the publisher you don't have anything in your hand even i didn't yes. get, i don't even get my book in my name also if i have to buy then i have to buy so because we submit the all rights to to them yeah Yes. Sir, they will take the last yeah. two questions and then we'll stop because we are at twenty uh, thirty-five. But the last question is by yeah. Dr. Vinod Kumar P. Is he wants to know buyer skin flap? And secondly, sir, uh, they are asking you for a diagram on on the in initial inverted U shape incision. I think taking a diagram now, Sumit, may be difficult. But uh, I'll leave it to sir to. <laughs> If he can, yes, yes. Uh, maybe uh, he wants I, I, a line uh, diagram. Uh, I, uh, about the bias flap, you see, if you are using bias flap after correction of the cordy. to have the ventral side i will advise you put a buyer flap not in the mid line but to one side with the dartos so that in the next one you can take when you do urethroplasty dartos will be available with you so that is what one is there and हेलो डायग्राम दिस इज द्लास मीएटस एंड दिस इज डॉर्सल हुड and this is the meatus and this is shaft so you create a u shaped incision and this one can you see this one uh, no are you sir. able to see ha huh, now we are able to see yes sir are you satisfied I I will ask Doctor Vinod, but yes, yes sir, we can uh, see. But uh, definitely, sir, I think hypospadias. Uh, for learning hypospadias, we need to see you uh, operate. And uh, while you are the president this time of pediatric urology, and uh, Chawla sir is interested in having a, a major operative workshop on hypospadias with you. i suggest that that would be a very uh, apt opportunity for all of us to I'm, learn I'm and for hypospadias i can go anywhere yes sir i would definitely we know that your love for hypospadias uh, chawla sir sir uh, would you like to say uh, something sir no ma'am actually sir has covered very nicely uh, uh, i think uh, we'll engage him uh, Uh, many times in the, this calendar year because uh, this is uh, uh, the request of the residents they want to be very clear about the hypospadias and few have shown some interest that they want to learn the surgery i think we will engage him for our uh, uh, future activities also i um, ask you the webcast i ask you the the, uh, the idea is uh, uh, this domain of uh, uh, good thing about in a month or two i am likely to start. to stay with the, the geologist and with the him being the uh, chair and the president of 
perception of creative neurology is great that the more and more young surgeon and the region support of it to learn from him, visit him, read his book, and uh, try to improve their skills. Uh, that will be great. Sir, uh, I am also trying, and maybe in uh, I'll uh, uh, tell you. Cast the web as well as I think I'll start few training programs also. Um, my center is almost ready for training. So in a month or two, maybe anybody who wants to come and see, I'll allow them to see. Uh, okay, sir. Any questions? Sir, there is one last question uh, which is raised by Doctor uh, Patankar. Is, is there any workshop for redo hypospadia surgery? You want, you see, anybody who wants workshop, anything with the, they want to do, redo, proximal, distal, or cardi, even hypospadia cripple, whichever they want, then I'll be happy to go there and do. And if there will be any cases, they can be in touch with me. I, whenever I will post them, I'll ask them to join if anybody wants to join. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. So, sir, we would come to the conclusion of our uh, webinar and we are extremely grateful for you and we look forward to learn more from you, sir, uh, at sure, your center and at our place too. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you, Thank everybody, you. for participating in the webinar and we had a good attendance of 74 at one point in time. I thank also uh, Chawla, sir, for uh, 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 envisioning this uh, program. And uh, also, uh, we thank the USI officials, uh, our president, Dr. Sanjay Kulkarni, and our secretary, Dr. Lakshman Prabhu, past secretary, uh, Dr. Keshav Murthy, and so many senior people for joining the seminar. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night. Take care. Thank you Goodbye. again for ISU, USI, and President Chawla Saab, Secretary Prabhuji. Past secretary, he is sitting and seeing, observing so nicely. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you. Chance. Thank you. At any time, ma'am, I am at your services. You call me, I'll be happy to come and do the job for residents or anybody. Thank you. Yes, sir, you have to come to KM, definitely. Sure, Thank sure. you and good night, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good, night. Yeah. good night, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.